My name is Mike Kafis. This is Peter Bryant. We are the Mythwits. <laughs> this show dedicated to geek and pop culture, drenched in absurdity and covered with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest, or in this case, three wonderful industry guests, uh, to talk about the ever expanding Geekoverse. As Mike said, I'm your host, Peter Bryant. Mike Kafis is my co host. I'm uh, wiggling. He's wiggling. No wiggling. <laughs> <laughs> and this, on this episode, this live episode of Balticon, <laughs> I am jo- We are joined by Spence. Hi, I'm Spence. <laughs> <laughs> and Star. Oh, Dave Robeson. No, Star. <laughs> Dave Hutch. I mean, in the camera, it does look like Dave. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Dave Robeson. I just play one on Mythics. Right. <laughs> How do you... What's your pronounage? <laughs> yeah, just I'm curious. curious. <laughs> well, I, I want to hit well, this way. I'm, I'm Dave Robeson. So, <laughs> so we'll just go with Dave Robeson. All right. And down on the end, John Hi. Walker. John Walker. Hi. Okay. Hi, John. I can't top this. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do, we're going to go through, we're going to read the story first, and then we'll talk with my fine co-host, because we'll have enough time to finish this one, unlike last year and, and the year before. Before you um, start, yeah. Uh, everyone, who was here last year? Who, who enjoyed the reading last year? So I was promised, and maybe this is good news, maybe this is bad news, maybe my intervention will change the future, but we were promised that someone here on this panel who always cracks up every year was not going to crack up, was not going to make a, a wonderful fool of himself. What the hell are you looking at me for? So, uh, it's all your fault. I apologize in advance if that happens. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Though. Right, yeah. So go ahead, Pete. <laughs> all, right. all right, so this story was written um, written for the, the Skotori. What's the, what's the official title of the contest? Skotori. The Skotori. Short Story Writing Competition. Yes, okay, that. So I, I entered that with my short story. It's what, 200, 200, uh, 2,200 uh, words, right? Uh, 1,800 to 2,200 words. Right, I always, it's going to be 2,200 if it's me. So, <laughs> so 2,200 words. Um, so this, this is a lot shorter. The one that we read last year was like 7,500. So we'll get through this. We should. The, key, the key thing on this is the theme was things that go bump. Right, so it has to be things that go bump. And it has to include the sentence... Hey, what's that red stuff on your face? Yes. So I, so I hit both of those. All right. Uh, so. Spread that light. So we'll. <laughs> no wiggling. All right. So, the left. so I, I actually wrote this with with um, Spence and John and me in mind. So these these characters are written around us in for us. Oh, thanks. And then. Uh, Dave was going to read. He always reads for us, but he can't make it to Balticon this year. Very sad face. Um, He's right but, there. It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> but he managed to... <laughs> There's a mani- manifestation. Yeah, okay. you, you, asked me, you asked me to fill Dave's spot, so I, I figured I'd just go all the way with it. And, and, <laughs> now, can you do the voice? <laughs> no. So Starla was, Starla was very generous and decided to come join us, so that was awesome. So, thank, you, thank you, Starla. So the story is Bump. So Starla? Bump. The sound vibrated through the facility. Every hour on the hour, Lunar Base One used a powerful electromagnetic rail launcher to send another pill-shaped capsule to Earth. The capsule would then be intercepted in near-Earth orbit and manipulated into a docking port on one of the Star Power Star Power's four space stations. The capsules, filled with helium-3-rich regolith, would be purged into the station for processing. Once processed, the helium-3 fed Star Power's reactor. That energy was sent down the beanstalk to Earth. This was the new way of things, clean energy for all, and at a price far cheaper than any other form of power before. However, this system was complex. From the Earth to Star City to Lunar Base 1, it required an army of scientists and technicians. Star Power was the largest company in the world and employed thousands of people from the PhDs in the labs to the knuckle-dragging wrench turners who worked in the rail tunnels that transported the regolith from the mining crawlers to the fuel shuttles. A short, bulky man dressed in grimy coveralls walked down the tracks next to a slightly taller, slightly less bulky bearded man. In one hand, he had a half-eaten, somewhat dirty sandwich, and in the other, he carried a large red wrench. 
Hey, man, why do we always get the grime details? I mean, every time one of the tracks gets jammed up, it's John and Pete report to the maintenance bay. Pete looked over and nodded. I know, right? It's like that bitch in dispatch, Spencer. She's got it in for us. As if on cue, Pete's radio crackled to life. Are you two jackals on location yet? Over. Pete fumbled for the radio, nearly dropping it from being startled. Uh, no, not yet. We're uh, about five minutes out. A short pause followed, and the agitated radio voice spewed forth again. Over. Jumping shit biscuits. How many mother-loving times do I have to tell you numbnuts? When you're done talking, you say over. And what in God's name is taking you so long? You two stop pulling each other's dicks and get to that location and unfuck that intersection. I've got lights popping up all over the place, and I don't have time to babysit you two window lickers. Over. Pete was busy mocking her as she screeched at him. John took a bit of a bite of his dirty sandwich. Pete smiled, turned his voice to, the, to charm mode, and thumbed the button on the radio. Don't worry, boss lady. We got this. We'll be on site momentarily, and we'll clear that obstruction with the utmost expediency. You can count on us, ma'am. Uh, over? I didn't think you knew any five-syllable words. Just get it done and get back here. We've got failure reports across the station. You're going to have a busy night. John had gotten ahead of Pete by about 20 yards while Pete was working the radio. Hey! Oh, sorry. <coughs> My bad. Good job. Hey, we're here, and as expected, there's our jam up. Pete looked at the intersection. Two tracks came together here and fed into the main launch site. Field Epsilon went off to the right, and Field Gamma off to the left. The intersection had filled with regolith and was frozen in the Epsilon position. This was a fairly regular occurrence. Try as they might to keep it out, that stuff got into everything. The two men went to work. John began working the bolt loose as Pete jammed the pry bar into the intersecting joint. Give me a few more turns on that. I don't think it's loose enough yet. John wiped the sweat, the sweat from his brow, leaving a dirt smear across his forehead. Oh, come on, man. I've been cranking on this thing for like five minutes now. It's biting me all the way. Pete huffed. Stop crying about it and give me a few more cranks. Well, if you were more of a man, I wouldn't have to do it all the work. You need to jerk it in order. Put your back into it and bury it deep in the crack. <laughs> Wiggly! <laughs> Oh, I'll bury it deep in the crack, like I did your mom. <laughs> the radio sprang to life. Control to the Tweedle Brothers. You two almost finished. These system failures are getting out of hand. I need you two back here ASAP. How much longer are you going to be? Pete wiped his brow, leaving a similar dirt smear. Not sure. This bastard is really stuck. Over. Well, double your efforts and get that shit finished. Also, I've lost contact with three of the maintenance teams. Have you noticed any interference on your radio? Over. Pete wished he had been so lucky. No, our connection has been pretty solid. Over. Well, keep an eye out for Team 6. You should cross paths with them on your way back. If you see them, tell them to check in. Over. Roger that! Out! Pete drew back with all his might and slammed the bar into the intersection. Regolith shot out of the hole, and the track came free. John let out a long sigh. <sighs> it's about goddamn time being bent over like that is hell on my back. <laughs> the radio squelched. I'm showing the connection changed. You idiots finally get that thing unfucked? Over? Pete tumbled the switch. Yeah, she just popped free. We're all good. Over. Well, what in the tarnation are you waiting for? Get your asses back here. My control panel looks like a goddamn Christmas tree. We need to do a system-wide shutdown. I'm recalling all teams back to Central so we can form a plan. Something really strange is happening here. Hey, tell them they can't come in here. This is the main control. What in the... Holy shit, Biscuits! <laughs> a long silence filled the tunnel as the two men stared at the radio. Pete looked up at John. That's not good. John smirked. 
Yeah, I know. She didn't say over. <laughs> Give her some shit, man. I dare you. <laughs> he took another bite of his sandwich and began chewing it with a big smile on his face. Pete slapped the sandwich out of John's hand. No, you fucking moron. Weren't you listening? John frowned and looked down at the remains of his sandwich. He looked back up and blinked twice. Pete shook his head and thumbed the radio. Control, what's going on? Pause. Control, are you okay? I repeat, are you okay? Pause. Control, come in, Control. Please respond. The radio suddenly sprung to life. Screaming and guttural sounds filled the air. (laughs) And then the radio went dead again. Pete looked at John. Come on. Uh, We have to get back to control right away. John blinked two more times. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I know I'm not that bright, but I think that's a terrible idea. (laughs) Pete thought for a second. When you're right, you're right, buddy. (laughs) He pulled up the lunar rail system maps, found the nearest emergency shelter, and activated the directional overlay feature on his retinal HUD. He then swiped it over to John, who accepted the incoming data packet. Pete dropped all of his tools and looked to John. Drop all that shit and let's go. The emergency shelter's pretty close. Just follow the arrows on your HUD and we'll shelter in place until whatever the hell blows over. The two men walked at a brisk pace down the track. John stopped to check out one of the air recyclers. It looked like some type of mist was coming out of it. As he got close, a large puff of the mist erupted in his face. He began violently coughing. (laughs) Pete stopped and looked back to him. Hey, what's that red stuff on your face? (laughs) John wiped his face with his hand, and it came away with a red powder. He coughed some more. (coughs) I don't know. It was coming out of the vent and... Pete cut him off. Shh! Do you hear that? They both stood quietly for a moment. Yeah? Sounds like a bunch of people yelling. And look, someone's coming around the corner. A man came running directly at them. Run, you fools! They're coming! He shot in between the men and kept going. The two men looked at each other. Pete lifted one eyebrow and looked to where the man had run. He was moving at a breakneck speed and disappeared around the bend. John grabbed his shoulder and spun him back to face where the man had come from. A throng of people came pouring into the tunnel. They were running at the two, and they were screaming and thrashing. Their faces twisted into something between anger and fear. As they passed under the lights, Pete could see a cloud of red dust coming from them. Pete turned to John. But he was already running after the other man. (laughs) Pete followed suit. They ran for five minutes, and John began coughing and wheezing. Can't run much farther. Pete pulled up the map again and quickly scanned it. Go left at the next intersection. Have an idea. John shouted back. No, wait, that's a dead end. It's a capsule launch bay. Pete looked at him. We'll never make it if we go right. It's a mile to the next station, and you look like you're about to fall over. John did not like either option, but before he could think of how to respond, the intersection was upon them. His buddy had gotten them out of many jams in the past, so he went left. They arrived at the launch bay, and the capsule was awaiting its cargo. Pete activated the airlock, sealing the bay from the tunnel. Get us two suits, all the extra extra oxygen bottles, and one of the radios. Put them in the capsule. I'll see if I can override the system and launch this damn thing. John went wide-eyed. You're going to launch us into space. (laughs) That's crazy. Let's just wait here for help. Pete moved towards the control panel. Didn't you hear? The whole station was lighting up with system failures. This is everywhere. There's no one to wait for. These capsules get to Earth in five days. If we ration the water and the suits, we might just make it. We can call for help on the radio, and maybe someone will come get us. Now move, man! There's no time! John moved. He put in two spacesuits, the radio, and began filling the capsule with oxygen tanks. Just then, the two noticed the pounding on the airlock door. The maniacs had managed to break through the thick glass of the outer door and were now at the inner door. John went over to look at the airlock. The glass was cracking as one of them beat on it feverishly with a large red wrench. Their faces were twisted into horrific grimaces. 
Red dust billowed out from angry red boils on their skin. They were covered in a dirty red paste. It was, du- it was that dust mixed with blood. John spoke in a very small voice. Oh, blood covered in blood. Pete figured out how to trick the system into doing a test launch, and a loud humming began as the capacitors started to charge. Pete called out, Okay, John, we're out of here. Get inside and into your spacesuit. This is going to be tight. I hope the hell the inertia doesn't kill us. He looked over to the capsule, but John wasn't there. He looked around the room. John stood frozen at the airlock as the maniacs finally smashed through the thick glass. John, run, you idiot! Pete wanted to run to his friend, to help him. He wanted the last words his friend would ever hear from him to be something other than, you idiot. (laughs) But it was too late. They swarmed him. The first one struck him in the head with a pipe wrench. Two others began kicking him, and a third bit off his nose. Pete cried out. No! And the mob looked up at him. Oh, shit. He thought and slammed his hand down on the panel. The hatch on the capsule began to slide shut. Pete jumped from the command station onto the conveyor belt and ran to the capsule. He dove for the opening and landed hard within as the door slammed shut. As he scurried into his spacesuit, they began banging on the outside of the capsule, and he could hear the pitch of the capacitors. So loud now. Oh, God, this thing was about to fire, and he was not in position. He would be slammed against the back of this thing, breaking every bone in his body. He hurled himself to the back, and as he jammed his helmet on, he heard the whoosh as the exit hatch opened, exposing the launch bay to space. It was followed by a powerful thump as the emergency seals kicked in. Pete was shoved hard against the back of the capsule as the capacitors released their charge and sent him hurtling into space. Bump. That's it? So, uh, how many cuss words did you really want me to say? All of them. Okay. <laughs> Thanks! I don't get to say them on my show. Oh, nice. Okay, so, so that is the first and last time I'll put myself into a story, mm-hmm. and I'm going to leave it forever to be... Wondered whether I survived or not. <laughs> well, I, we know we didn't. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Hey, when you read for me, you almost always die. So <laughs> three times. Three times. So noted. <laughs> you know what? And all right. Anyway, so, so I, I have a yeah. I have a couple questions. Sure. I was, I was taking, Go for it. I was taking some notes. Um, <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but raise your hand. Do we all want to know what the hell was on that sandwich? <laughs> yeah, thank you. John, so, what would you be eating? You're the writer. We want to know what's in the Bible. Oh, do you want me to s- tell you what yes, he's eating? Yes. Peanut butter and salad dressing sandwich. Gross. <laughs> what, wait, what salad dressing? No, no, salad dressing. Like, like uh, Miracle Whip. Oh, Miracle Whip. It's Miracle Whip and peanut butter sandwich. No. It's it's. Private. You you are a really is a story, isn't it? Life. <laughs> it is. Like it's making my stomach hurt. <laughs> and I'm the, I'm the one who died, folks. Okay. That's a delicious sandwich. It, or it could be. But peanut. listen, I died first, so. <laughs> I know. Could be. Like, if, if it wasn't the zombies, like, it would be sandwich. Got you. All right, question number two. Uh, what exactly was stuck in the epsilon position again? The tracks. The, oh, so the, the, track, the track goes down, and it can go to this bay or this bay to drop off the regolith that it has. If this one's uh, full and it's going off, it'll go down to the other one. But it was stuck in one position. And, and how many cranks did it take <laughs> to un... Fadoodle that uh, yeah, how many? What? there are children in the room. I will not be a part of Three. as many as possible. Right? <laughs> you know, I really thought you were going to break on that. I, I I put that in there. I know. I practiced. <laughs> Let the record. I, I did. I, 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 I was in my room for an hour, going over these lines. But I'm not going to this up this year. I'm not going to mess up this year. It's kind of Fuck you, Pete. I'm not. Uh, so let the record reflect that Pete tried his best to break John. I did. But John <laughs> remains unbroken. Couldn't break him. So I'm pretty sure that you know that you said this is a Oh. This is a cold read. Oh, wow. Okay. Damn. It's only because I have my mentor here. Yeah. Uh, all right, Mike, anything else? Uh, not really. Um... <laughs> Uh, no. no I don't know. I don't know. You broke all of us. All of us. Oh, oh. oh. 
in, in your efforts to break John, I broke the audience. You broke the audience. That's good. <laughs> Yay. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. No, no, I'm sorry. It was Starla that broke. Yeah. Oh yeah, Starla. <laughs> Who's <Dave>. Starla? <laughs> that guy. Dave. Dave. That guy. Dave. I don't That's see any. Us. I didn't. Oh. <laughs> Starla has brilliant. Purple hair, so yeah, it's kind of hard. I had this person has no hair. <laughs> I had no idea this was coming. I had no clue. This is awesome. Oh, this is so purpose. good. So good. So I was good. actually a little nervous because I'm like, is he gonna like? How serious does he take this? Like, no. if I oh. show up and do this, oh, am you I haven't been <laughs> here, have you? <laughs> okay, she no, to me for like a second. Maybe oh. somebody would be mad. Right, but no. then I was like, no, no, oh, that's cute. No, no, that's no, cute. no, no. It's all the better. What's it's kind of funny is the story before this one. Was about someone who met their doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> so and one of them looked much older. This is gonna this is gonna warm Dave's heart. You know that, yeah. right? He's he's already well, that, he's, kind of he's, he's already pictures. seen it. And yeah. He's he's as bloody brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. I know he and he and Terry couldn't be here. Yes, stuff, so. yes. I, I, I let him know that you know people miss him. He's here, man. He's right here. here in heart and mm. in cosplay. cosplay. And cosplay. <laughs> he has never been cosplayed before. That I don't awesome. understand that. Like now. it's the perfect opportunity. Yes, yes. It's so. Awesome. Uh, anyone out here? Does anyone not know who Jonathan Walker? The what number are you? The third, the fourth, the. Uh, the second. I, the ass are you talking? <laughs> He's <laughs> asking if you are the third of your name. No, I'm. I, You're the, there's only me. Oh, so. first of the Andals, first of his name. <laughs> Does anyone not know who Jonathan Walker is? I just met him shit talking today. Well. His reputation always precedes him. Jonathan, tell us what you're up to. What do you got going on? These days? No, it's John. It's, it's never been Jonathan. Ever. Never John. You're, you're trying and to make sound off. fancier yeah. than Jonathan. He is. Yeah, this is a serious thing. Okay. Yeah. There it is. What are you up to? <laughs> what am I up to? Uh, what do you got going on? What's what's oh, your? Uh, oh, right right now I'm on Mythwit stealing with you two. Yeah, well, you got a book. <laughs> you have a book release. Yes, I did. I released a book. Yeah. Yay! Wow, it's like and it was done by here. the person who's not uh, who's sitting under all this. Right yes, uh, the cover was done by this wonderful person right here, um, Starla Hutchinson. Uh, Starla Hutchinson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I didn't. I don't know the rules of cosplay. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to break the. Yeah, I, the wall. Break the I, I don't think there's like anybody's confused. Right. <laughs> I am. I'm totally confused. If, if anyone goes, God damn, I could have swore I saw Dave Rogue here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> then you've was, done your job right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I was confused for about 20 seconds when I walked in, but I'm not wearing my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I mean, is it wrong to say I'm strangely confused and aroused? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I thought that was your MO. Right. I mean, it, it is. It is my MO. It is. But I just, there's a muse. So, so, what is this book you have? What is? Oh, it's the eleventh in the uh, Stafford Chronicles. I'm uh, still doing it. Oh. Hold on. I'll talk about the book. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> and Vanna. Where's the camera? Oh, yeah. There's a camera. There's right there. Um, yes. it's, really it's, about, it's about, it's the 11th book in the series. It's about a, the, a private detective of the gods. Um, and a bunch of kids are killing themselves in really creative ways, and it's due to heartbreak. So, Aww. wow. Yeah. Oh, that's really You're sad. so dark. I need to start fucking shit. Wait, it's... <laughs> No, I, I had some fun writing this. And, um, yeah. Wow, wow. It's spinning around. That's so sad. It yeah. is. I'm, 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 a, I'm a cruel son of a bitch. You, you really are. Did you catch any feels when you are writing this? Like, did, did oh, they, yes, actually, I did. Yeah. yeah? I did. I actually caught some feels. I actually uh, shed, shed some tears at the end. Yeah? Was, yeah. It, no, and I'm being serious. No, no, no. Um, And it was, it was a lot of fun to write. And then I uh, decided, well, I want to try something new with the covers and called... Starla said, hey, well, spoke to Starla and said, hey, I need, I need new covers. And she I don't went, do phones. Oh, yeah, she doesn't do it either. <laughs> and, and she went, yeah, yeah, we do. And I was like, okay, well, have at it. Bam! Nice. Like, oh, nice. nice. Well, the first ones that I did, I did them like nine years ago or something like that, something like eight years ago, yep. something crazy. So, yeah, they needed a facelift in a bad way. 
Right. Yeah. So. Oh, cool. Fantastic. And you're, are you doing a reading or anything like that? Tom? Yes. Uh, tomorrow night. Uh, it, so, oh, shit. <laughs> tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Right. Um, at the Club Lounge. I'll be uh, reading Chapter 1 of Book 12 that I'm writing already. How, how many books in this series? There's going to be 21 total. 20? Oh, Jesus, that's massive. Okay. I am. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the definition of a masochist. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I'm a sadomasochist. I do it to myself. Yeah. Right. And enjoy it. Right. Yes. <laughs> so, Starla, you do book covers? Yes. And? And? Well, I do audio writing, book right? narration. Yeah. I do. And I'm an author. Yes. Um, yeah. My, I have all, many hats. What you got going on this weekend? Is she going on right now? Uh, actually, <laughs> all of my stuff this weekend, I think. Well, let's see. Yeah, most of my stuff this weekend is like narration related, but I'm doing the Dirty Mad Libs, which is going to be fun. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh. I haven't done it with you. I'm kind of scared. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. Easy. Oh. Easy, Tiger. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. If you do, I want pictures. <laughs> well, you can camera. be here on um, Sunday night. Now, I have um, dynamic voice acting tomorrow. I have, I'm have i doing my reading tomorrow, and I'm probably going to read from Make Bright the Arrows because the other two authors I'm reading with are like space opera. Okay. Is that's Make Bright the Arrows your one. latest book? Um, yeah, that's the one that you guys had me on talking yes, about it is. last year in August, yeah. Is there any other books that are out? Um, yeah, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how interested people here are going to be. It's a uh, YA Contemporary Romance was the last one that I released. Um, are there any YA Contemporary Romance fans out here? <laughs> there you go. So hey, love songs, detours, etc. Starla is and your guy. And I'm working on the audio for that one too. So. Is your guy. Starla hey, is your guy. So I, I never thought that I would be into any kind of romance book whatsoever. I mean, that just was not on my plate whatsoever. And we had Violet release. Uh, a, I guess it was kind of a romance book, right? It was mm-hmm. that was her step into romance. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how. That's pretty much what Violet. It's, it's not. It's definitely. T- it, there's no why. Right. There's no. No. Mm, no mm, why. Mm, no, M- not M- for the young. It's definitely rated I, for I, mature. Should, should I introduce them to my superheroes? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, right. yes. 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 I mean, yes. So I mean, I totally used it for Dirty Mad Libs yeah. last year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Evolution Angel is available as a free podcast. Book okay. One. And, and what what is that about? Um. I. I Short version, sexy superheroes. Sex? <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, she so <laughs> Better. Yeah, it just does look better. better. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. And and so was this your first romance that you've written? <laughs> <laughs> have you I have yeah, 24 I'm books I'm out sorry. right now. Let me, let, me, let me rewind that. What I meant to say was, was this your first young YA no. romance? Okay, okay. No, I have another YA contemporary romance that I released in, like, 2016. Okay. Yeah. What Mo- is mostly next? I, mostly I do science fiction and fantasy type stuff, but um, every now and then I get the urge to do... Anything in your pipeline that you... Uh, oh, God, it did not sound right on. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you paused I, that way. Right, yeah, <laughs> so if you just kept going with it, you know. Yeah. Anything in your pipeline you want to like to <laughs> disclose? It just still doesn't sound right. Uh, well, I just had an audiobook release this past week. It was a collection of Kevin J. Anderson stories that I got to narrate, and it is what? like over 12 hours of short stories. It's actually a second nice. project. I worked, worked um, on for him. So wow, that's, that's, that's a big name there, that Kevin J. Anderson. He's done a few books. Yeah, drop a credit on old Star <laughs> Star Robeson. <laughs> star Robeson. Yeah, and like Benz, what's we got? You have a T-shirt on. I do have a T-shirt on. I hope you have a Hi! I have a t-shirt on. This is my podcast game school that I host with uh, my friend James Carpio. We we play sorry. We play uh, role playing games. We talk to the games designers and uh, yeah, teach you how to build your characters and stuff and it's way too much fun. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is QCing audiobooks, which is probably the coolest job in the world. Uh, <laughs> And my business has been in business for two years now. Yay. Oh, sorry. Resident Moon Audiobook Solutions. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that. <laughs> and, uh, and Game School is part of the TSR Podcast Network. So we're kind of cousins to these yes. guys. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's an unholy kind of game. Yeah, so much really? Fun. 
but you, you know, at the same the time, team. I'm following in the footsteps of somebody I really admire, Satine Phoenix. So yes, there's was, that. She was season one, and, and Spence and James came in for season two. And one of the things is it, interesting about that show is that it's like like she said, they talk about the rules, and the mechanics, and stuff, and then the the last. Uh, like 15, 20, 20 minutes or if we're really enjoying the yeah, game half an, hour, half an hour half an hour is a short demo of seeing how those mechanics work in the game so it's a lot of fun I try to keep it to an hour but they usually end up being an hour and 15 minutes yeah and I edit those so yeah she's got to edit it so the longer you make it that's just masochism right there well Part of it's your fault when you're on the show. <laughs> I'm a talker, you see. <laughs> He's a sacker. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, oh, so later tonight, as in right after the show, there's a writing competition thingy that he was just talking about. Um, and uh, uh, apparently I meet the top five of that writing And just like stay here after this one and come cheer for me. That would be should, awesome. Yeah, you should just stick around. Just stick around. It's going to be interesting. Um, like I said, this, the story that that you heard tonight was one of the ones that was entered in the contest and will be very surprised. part of the uh, anthology. So that's cool. I'm going to be a published book finally. Um, <laughs> so so that there was a lot of fun. And I, and I was telling Scott before. Uh, when this this thing was announced, I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm in!" And uh, and then I started writing, and I was like getting really excited about it because I was like, "This was an opportunity for me to tell a story that I hadn't planned on telling. It came out of nowhere, but it fit right into stuff that I was doing. Anyway, it's part of a, a longer story arc that I was working on. And I like doing I like doing these little short stories that come out of but aren't part of another story that I want to write because it helps it helps me define that story in a lot of ways. Um, so that that was really that was really cool. Like these characters are not important to the story at all. They just they tell one incident that's going to be well, yeah. Because now they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in, in the bigger story, this will be sort of like uh, this thing happened in the news kind of thing, and people dealing with repercussions and stuff. But you won't actually experience any of it because it's going to happen, and no one's going to know what's going on really. So I it was just fun to write. Red, I know what the red stuff. Was. You do know what the red stuff was. Hey, what's up? You want to play a game? Sure. Oh, you got a game? All right, let's do a game. Oh, all right. I like games. So it's game time with In the Mythwits. In front of all these people? Yes. <laughs> and I'm your play. game master. Oh, that game. Mike Kafis. Uh, and today we'll be playing Would You Rather? Uh-oh. Inspired by a friend of mine. In the front <laughs> room. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to ask the panel a couple of Would You Rather questions, okay? Okay. Uh, and this first one is very appropriate for Balticon. <laughs> Not this panel appropriate. It's like more generally appropriate and acceptable. So, God, that's horrifying. N- no, no, this is less horrifying. The later ones, the later ones are horrifying. Would you rather, Jonathan? Jonathan, would you rather lose the ability to read or lose the ability to speak? I'm sure everybody here would love me. I would rather lose the ability to speak, and so would everybody else around here. Yeah. <laughs> right, shut up, I got my juice box. <laughs> All right. I'm dying to know what's in that. I'm dying to know what's in your box. <laughs> it's in the box. <laughs> it's, it's filled with juice, Mike. <laughs> Uh, Starla? Yes. Would you rather lose the ability to read or lose the ability to speak? God, that's hard. Because I get... I, she does both. <laughs> yeah. I, all, um, I mean, for you, it would be, would you rather... Well, no, okay. You, no, ooh, no. So, possibly. okay, I got an answer. So I think I would rather lose the ability to speak because then I will have a great excuse to never answer my phone again. <laughs> <laughs> or your husband. <laughs> Wow, uh, I mean, there is sign language. <laughs> Who said that? No, I think the spirit of speak, or the spirit of read, because I can listen to audiobooks if I can read, right? Yep. Yeah, but you read sign language, so whoops. Yeah, well, you use both. No, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, it's a one-way conversation. This is where I usually have with you. <laughs> uh, yes. Would you, Spence? Rather, 
Mm-hmm. Lose the ability to speak or lose the ability to read. I don't talk that much anyway. So. Um. <laughs> Listen. Okay. Thank you, Millie. Uh, outside of Balticata, I do not do a lot of talking. She gets it all out here. <laughs> She makes up for it at home. It's a common That first day when she's just grunting and pointing at things, she's getting used to talking. <laughs> that, that was me last night when I was trying to figure out pre-reg. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I would miss making my silly voices, and I would miss singing. But, yeah. Yeah, so... As much as I love to read, God, I love yeah. to read. <laughs> you ain't, you, 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 you are going to be an illiterate, never <laughs> shut up person. <laughs> I, 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 I think wait, my why is this night different. Yeah, why is this night different from all other people? Yeah, things? I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> if, if I stopped talking, I think my head would literally explode. I think it would literally just blow off my shoulders. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's a good one. Would you rather spend, Peter... The rest of your life with a sailboat as your home or an RV as your home, and you may not, you're not allowed to rationalize which one would your family rather not have so that you would pick that one. Oh, it's going to be RV. It's going to be RV. <laughs> because that's what they wouldn't pick? No, it has nothing oh, to do with okay. them. No, it has nothing to do with them. It has to do with the fact that I get seasick. <laughs> so, so it's RV. All right, Spence. RV. Because if, if you have a boat, your boat can sink. But the Your worst thing RV can happen. Crash. The, not if it's parked. If you run out of gas, if That's you break true. down, it is still yeah. a shelter. Mm-hmm. Right. There are still amenities to it. Yep. You aren't allowed to rationalize. Uh, oh, I don't have he, a family. Forced, this is just for me. He forced the issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we say Starlet. <laughs> um, I would probably say the RV also. And, and I was in the Navy, so that didn't, I know that doesn't make any sense, but I was never on a ship, so. <laughs> it does not make sense. No, it doesn't. Arby. How many people would want to be in a, in a boat? All right. The cool people. Yeah. Mike, you don't understand. The cool people have raised their hands. I would Thank rather you. be able to be in a sailboat, but I would also rather not get seasick, so. Yeah. Sucks for you. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right. You get to wear cons in the RV. Yeah. What about sinkholes? Yeah. What about tornadoes? <laughs> right. the, Never the, heard ocean. Of, the ocean is one big sinkhole. But, you know. <laughs> Never Never heard, heard of Greebolts? Hmm? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so All right, Mike. Any more? Uh, I'm going to take the one that uh, Tori had asked me during a panel because I'm not going to say she was bored, but uh, I'm going to say I, I, I love it, though, because, <laughs> but I rationalized it. Uh, would you rather have a pet skunk that sprayed you once a month or a pet porcupine that quilled you once a month? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, once a month. Yeah. So porcupine that quills you once a month or a uh, skunk that... Why are you trying to influence my answer? <laughs> because you're the Let's start with Jonathan. You're the only one out there, obviously. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go with skunk. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> well, I didn't see that coming. Good to me. <laughs> I totally saw that coming. I just don't, I, I mean, it, that, that just makes it so, I don't have to be around people. <laughs> so you're, oh yes, I'm an anti social Can't speak, bastard. and you stink. <laughs> yes. In an RV. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, you know what? You uh-huh. can read about it, yeah. though. <laughs> Starla? I have experienced what a porcupine quill feels like. Ooh. It's not as exciting as you think. <laughs> well, no, it is because I, I one of my how questions was how much that do you story bleed? Is not that exciting. How much do you bleed? Well, if it's just one quill, not very much. So I would take that. Like, <laughs> easy. Is it just one quill or are they like. Like, it was not specified, so. Yeah. I mean, it's my question. Quill. You asked me the question. But you justified your question. Yeah. My question. Okay, well, yeah. Then it's one quill, but it's the biggest quill. It's Peter Quill. I mean, yes. 
I would also say quill, mostly because the smell lingers on all of your shit. Mm. So, uh, you know, once once the scabs heal from all of your many puncture wounds. Oh. Uh, what you kind know. of skunk are you hanging out with? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm talking about getting a porcupine. Uh, yeah. but, <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. Do try I've, I've, had, do I've tried to get skunk smell out after uh, two weeks, and it was very difficult. Nature's miracle does not always work now. So, Mike, I think you meant polecat. <laughs> no, actually, so, so no, I'll take I'll take the quill, even if it was like a whole handful of the damn things, because you know me and smells. I'm like, oh, no, oh my god, yes. yeah. I'm not. Is that, <laughs> yeah, no, I no, he stabbed me multiple times. It's the biggest and most precious gift this world can give you if you ever see him wretch. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Nope. So good. Okay. Nope. I, I chose I, I chose the porcupine as well because my my rationale was like it takes it at least a month to get the the skunk smell off of you. And you need the you best can. of and then it's the best of methods. And then it's spray time again. I know. You're like, <laughs> it's like, whew, I finally got that. Oh, like, ah, my eye. <laughs> we little, have a qualifier little. from a judge <clears throat> or participant. Or it's Shay. <laughs> Everybody say hi, Shay. Hi, hi Shay. Shay. I'm taking over your podcast. Okay. That's Am fine. I supposed to read this? It just says they can't shoot their quills. Oh, well, well, this thing was walking up to you. Oh, and, okay. and yeah. Stabbed you. You, like, you were sleeping, and this is your alarm clock. It's, it's, you know? got, the, <laughs> it's got that thing where, like, you, you don't know it's coming until it gets yeah. you. you know, but it know. hooks, the, but the, the porcupine quills yeah, do hook in you. Out, so to pull it out, you're going to bleed. Yeah. But my thing was like, well, man, if I'm losing a quart of blood, then maybe not. But, but you, I don't know. Okay, I'm, so off, slightly off topic. <laughs> no, <laughs> not here. <laughs> Porcupines make the most hilarious sound. They sound like an angry old man running through the house. Wait. You know, I don't know what's cuter. Porcupines or skunks are both really cute. Porcupines are both cute, but they're both cute. Skunks are cute, too. But also, on the way down to Balticon last year, we stopped And they stopped speak French, in, right? Something like that. No, skunk speaks French. Yeah, skunk, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Pepe Le Pew speaks French. But I'm sure there are French porcupines. <laughs> Back. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, no, we we were in, we stopped in New Jersey for gas, and um, this porcupine came out of the woods, and I swear it was like five feet long. He had a beret. He did. <laughs> he did, and he had a cigarette in his mouth, and he was going. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, Mike. Any more? No, no, no. I'm going to, I'm, uh, you, oh, you stall. I'm going to pull up our show ending so we okay. can uh, end the show. Oh, all right. Where are we vamping now? I don't know, man. It's a little early. Hey, when do we minutes? get to listen to your show live on Facebook? Live, okay. So our show is Monday nights at 9 p.m. once a week. Um, and we're actually going into break after this Monday. So this Monday, yes, we're going to do a show after the con. Uh-huh. I'm sad. And it's, it's all about, it's going to be all about Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's not the place. There's it. No, it's nah. that's, no, not at Tune all. In. No, everybody just it, it'll be a nice, easy conversation. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. No problems, right? So now, so that's what we're doing. We did, we we did, uh, <laughs> we we did uh, in game uh, last week, and that was really good. Uh, are we have anybody on? Are we gonna have anybody on for a Game of Thrones? Uh, I'm sure we can scrounge up somebody. Okay, we'll have, maybe we'll have Jonathan on again. I'll be on. Are you Maybe. on? Okay, you Game of Thrones uh, big big time watcher. I just finished watching it the other day. Do you have big uh, big hairy emotions about it? I have people I want to punch in the dick. There you go. All right, good. You're on. <laughs> all right, all right, fantastic. All right, all right. A really quick poll, <laughs> and we're done. No, a really quick poll. Uh, just you like Game of Thrones? Hands up. You like the ending? You were okay with the ending? You were okay with the ending? Okay, okay, okay or liked okay it? Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not okay with the ending. I'd say there was a little more okays than not okays. Okay. Cool. And we respect the... So I have to leave okay. early on Monday so I can get home to do this. Good. Awesome. Awesome. And I will tell you this. The one, here's the difference though, between the okays and the not okays. The not okays are about 5,000 times louder than the okays. And I get it. No, I totally understand. I understand why people wouldn't, wouldn't be okay with it. But I was. I mean, I was fine with it. But. And we'll go into that. We'll go into that Monday in depth. 
where do we broadcast? Do we Facebook uh, Live, man. Facebook I, Live. We have on a YouTube, the book of Facebook. We have you, you can you can watch it on YouTube, but that's really an after effect. That's really just a place to stick it so that I can share it easily. Uh, <laughs> share. Stick it to the man. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, it stays on Facebook as a video you can watch later. But the, but it's so much more fun to interact with everybody yeah. and watch it live. We love interacting, and I, I don't I, raise your hand if you've ever been in the chat room. I always I shout out. If you want to see something see. really funny, my dad and I fight in their chat room yeah. all the time. It's great. Uh, uh, my mom is in the chat room, but there's also a podcast. Mama, Mama Marsh. Hi, Mama Marsh. So so not everybody can watch videos, and everybody has time to sit down and watch an hour long video. Um, so you can listen to the podcast. podcast of them. Obviously, we strip out the audio and put it in there. Um, we are going to have every once in a while we have an audio only episode, and uh, we're going to have one during the summer break because our summer break is just June. We take off June. Um, we're going to we played Fiasco up at TotalCon, so that one is like I heard about that. about three hours. You heard about that? You might have heard that one. I did heard about that. Uh, that one's going to be on there as a, as a bonus audio only episode. Oh yeah, that, that was, was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, so our if you can't watch audio, you can't do live, and you're like, who's got time to watch a watch people talk all the time? Please feel free to search Mythwits uh, on your favorite podcatcher or your second favorite podcatcher. Yeah, you can watch it. You can listen on your second favorite. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that too. Yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> um, please, just any podcatcher. So, and we and usually we have we have guests on almost all the time. Every once in a while, we do shows with just us, just us. But uh, but it's usually we'll have somebody come on and yeah. and join us. Can we? Uh, there, I don't know. There are some people who are more bigger fans that know uh, David Benavides. Mm-hmm. Um, in memoriam, I yes. would just like to say uh, that David's mother died, and we, are, as uh, he's uh, probably one of our biggest fans, and we just wanted to say that we're sorry to hear about that, and that we love you, Dave. Yes, we love you, Dave. So. That is that. All right. You've just enjoyed another episode of The Myth Wits. Uh, if you don't have time, well, we just said all this crap. If you don't have time to make, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, and subscribe thing wherever it is appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread Myth Wits all over the entire planet. Or just spread it a nice thin layer across Balticon 53. If you mix it with just, peanut butter and salad dressing. Uh, <laughs> Where the mutton is just <laughs> so good. Uh, tweet us at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is produced by Aether Forge Creations as part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out PSR. PSR? TSRPN.com and Aetherforge.com for more cool stuff. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product like. And share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. And don't put a bald thing on and cosplay as Dave Robeson. Okay? <laughs> it's been, never don't be it's been, do that. It's been done. It's been it'll done. never be as fabulous. It'll never be <laughs> done before. If you, if you weren't here... You're missing it. <laughs> thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And we'll see you all on Monday. And, and stick around because we're going to do more stories with Skatori Podcast. Hi, you kind of rhymed. What's that? You kind of rhymed. More okay. stories with Skatori. Oh, and stay, oh, stay nice. tuned for the Movie Draft Minute.